Now, Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Khomeini has announced five days of mourning following the death of the country's president Ibrahim Raisi. He was killed in a helicopter crash on Sunday along with the country's foreign minister and several others. Rescuers had scoured the mountainous area in Iran's East Azerbaijan region before eventually discovering the wreckage. Officials say the aircraft crashed into a mountain peak during heavy fog. Raisi became president in 2021 and was a deeply conservative and hardline leader. Now, while many leaders and officials from across the world have been sending messages of condolences, the reaction among the Iranian diaspora has been mixed. The news of President Raisi's death sent shockwaves across Iran and beyond. Messages of condolence have been pouring into the country, many from regional neighbours, as well as allies and partners in other authoritarian regimes. Iranian embassies worldwide have seen both condolences and celebrations. In neighbouring Iraq, mourners lit candles and paid tribute to Raisi. In Moscow, some people came to lay flowers and offer their condolences. At Iran's embassy in Beijing, the flag flew at half-mast and the foreign ministry said China had lost a dear friend. President Raisi made significant contributions to Iran's security and stability, and he promoted its development and prosperity. The reaction from the United States was somewhat more ambivalent. Abraham Raisi was a brutal participant in the repression of the Iranian people for nearly four decades. That said, we regret any loss of life. We don't want to see anyone die in a helicopter crash. Um, but that doesn't change the reality of his record, both as a judge and as the president of Iran, the fact that he has blood on his hands. In other parts of the world, some were celebrating. In Syria's opposition-held Idlib province, where Iranian-backed terrorist groups have been known to operate, locals handed out sweets. Outside Iran's embassy in London, there is music, dancing and cheering. Demonstrators outside the Berlin embassy called this a happy day, as exiled members of the Iranian opposition in Germany made their feelings perfectly clear. Raisi's death has prompted mixed reactions from governments and leaders from around the world. Russia and Iran have deepened their ties since the start of Vladimir Putin's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Putin also hailed his country's strategic partnership and friendship. Tehran has supplied Moscow's forces with Shahed drones throughout the conflict. Syria is home to many Iran-linked militias, and President Bashar al-Assad was fulsome in his praise for Raisi's efforts to enrich Syrian-Iran relations. In Pakistan, Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif said his country would observe a day of mourning and fly the flag at half-mast as a mark of respect while Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi hailed Raisi's contribution to strengthening the bilateral relationship. The European Union's reaction was relatively muted. Council President Charles Michel expressed the EU's sincere condolences for the death of President Raisi as well as other members of their delegation and crew. The bloc has imposed sanctions against Iran in response to its human rights abuses, nuclear proliferation activities and military support for Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine. Well, I'm joined now by political analyst Ali Fatullah Nijad, director of the Berlin-based think tank, the Center for Middle East and Global Order. It's good to have you on the program tonight. Um, we were seeing pictures coming from Tehran this evening, showing people taking to the streets, people mourning publicly the death of their president. That's the official narrative. Is that the complete narrative? Well, it, no, it is not. Uh, it's uh, the narrative that is uh, pr proclaimed and propagated by the state. And as you know, uh, over at least the last decade, um, there has been emerging an immense gulf, uh, if not irreversible one, between state and society. So there are elements within Iranian society who are not joining uh, the state-ordered mourning. 
but um, there is a sense of schadenfreude as well, mm. uh, because after all, uh, President Raisi has been implicated uh, in a mass murder of political dissidents uh, at the end of the 1980s, where he has been part of a very small committee, um, you know, sentencing pe uh, dissidents to death with no judicial process whatsoever. And also, more recently, he was handpicked by the Supreme Leader of Iran, and as president, uh, he has been widely hailed as one uh, who is uh, extremely incompetent. Uh, I mean, who hold a doctorate, but only uh, probably attended just a few years of school. Mm. And also, uh, when it comes to his, to his campaign promises, he has failed. He had failed so far to deliver on any of them. Iran's supreme leader is 85 years old. President Raisi um, had been seen as a possible successor, the next supreme leader. Now that President Raisi is dead, can we expect, should we expect a power struggle at the top at some point in the future? Uh, I believe so, that the power struggle, especially when it comes to the question of succession of Iranian Supreme Leader uh, Ali Khamenei, going to be intensified. Uh, because, after all, uh, Raisi was a, a close uh, confidant and protégé of uh, Khamenei, and he has been uh, chairing a three-member committee tasked with finding uh, the new Supreme Leader. Uh, and as you said, uh, he was also traded himself to be uh, potentially the next Supreme Leader. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the uh, struggle over the question of succession going to certainly be intensified. Mm -hmm. And this, of course, um, I mean, uh, Raisi's death, of course, opens the way uh, for, uh, you know, new horizons uh, about the question of succession of the Supreme Leader. Well, we've got about um, 30 seconds here, but I want to get this question to you. Do you foresee any change in Iranian foreign policy, particularly with um, Iran's proxies in the mid Middle East? Well, not at all, because the center of power of Iran does not consist of, uh, does not contain uh, the uh, president, but uh, it is, uh, it consists of the supreme leader, its quasi-parallel government, the so-called office, plus the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. So all those are the ones who are calling the shots when it comes to Iran's regional and foreign policies, but also when it comes to domestic politics. So in political terms, uh, we can expect no changes, but what is going to be interesting is the more intensified power struggle at the top of the regime. Ali Fatullah Nijan from the Center for Middle East and Global Order. We appreciate your time and your analysis tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm joined now by Kamran Martin, a senior lecturer at the University of Sussex. He also specializes in, in on Iran and international relations. It's good to have you with us. Um, Abraham Raisi, he, he was seen as a possible successor to the 85-year-old supreme leader of Iran. With that in mind, what does his sudden death mean for the future at the very top of the country. Yes, indeed. Actually, the fact that he was um, seen as a potential successor uh, to Ayatollah Khamenei, uh, along with Khamenei's own son, who many observers believed is the uh, real uh, uh, kind of candidate for, for succeeding his father, uh, has given rise to all sorts of speculation within Iranian uh, community abroad and inside Iran, whether this was an sort kind of quote unquote inside job to get rid of a potential uh, competitor so that Khamenei's son can accede to to to, to the throne of his father. But in in terms of um, the impact of his death mm -hmm. in the actual um, political structure of Iran, actually presidency has limited power. It's not comparable to other republican systems. Mm -hmm. the real power lies in the hands of the supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei, and also de facto power um, in the hands of uh, IRGC, Revolutionary Guards, which has close relationship with Ayatollah Khamenei. Um, so in some ways, you might uh, say that this has simplified the succession with the removal of a potential candidate. But in any case, it is assembly of experts which has to select uh, the succeed, uh, who succeeds the the supreme uh, leader. But many, but the candidates in uh, the members of that assembly themselves mm -hmm. are selected by a body which is uh, appointed by the supreme leader. So the whole thing is sort of engineered um, or can be engineered in advance. 
Well, you, you say that the, the power equation inside the country may be simpler because of this tragedy. I'm wondering, though, what does it mean for foreign policy? We know that Iran is involved in Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Yemen, and of course, we know that it backs Hamas in Gaza. Will this tragedy, will the loss of the president, the, the foreign minister, will, will that change anything there? Well, you know, as it's, as uh, as it is well known, um, you know, the the uh, the person who has the last say on matters of national security as well as uh, strategic foreign policy is the supreme leader. Uh, so, in that sense, uh, even if Raisi was not in line with supreme leader, I don't think he could actually make a huge change in that regards. But the fact is, is that Raisi was a protege of Ayatollah Khamenei. He was very obedient to him, which was one reason why, among many reasons, why he was actually able to win the elections, because all the other potential candidates were disqualified by a body which is appointed by the supreme leader. So I don't think his demise actually impacts mm -hmm. Iran's foreign policy and regional policy, and it will remain in the hands of IRGC and the Supreme Leader. The, the relationship or the, or the absence of a relationship with, with Israel, will that be impacted at all by, by this tragedy? I doubt so. I mean, one of the many um, conspiracy theories uh, which is circulating around is that uh, Israel might have had some role in it because mm -hmm. Raisi was returning from a meeting with uh, the president of Azerbaijan Republic, opening a dam uh, between the two countries. And Azerbaijan is very has very close military and security relations with Israel, for which actually Iranian regime has in the past threatened the, the Republic of Azerbaijan. But of course, Israel has denied any involvement, and this remains a, only a kind of a, a, a theory. Uh, but in terms of the impact on um, Israeli-Iranian relationship, I think mm -hmm. Iran will continue to support its uh, so-called axis of resistance, what mm -hmm. other people call its proxy forces against Israel, but it will avoid uh, in an all-out war with Israel and the United States, mm. and there were reports of secret meeting between Iranian and American officials in Oman mm -hmm. regarding the same matter. I think that line will be continued by whoever is replacing uh, Raisi in Iran and, uh, and also by the IRGC and Supreme Leader. Mr. Martin, we appreciate your, your time and your valuable analysis tonight. Thank you. Well, in 2009, Mazia Bahari spent more than 100 days in an Iranian prison where he was tortured and threatened with execution. Well, the Iranian-Canadian journalist, filmmaker and editor of IranWire.com joins us now from uh, London. Good to have you uh, with us. Uh, how big a loss nice is Ibrahim Raisi's uh, sudden death uh, going to be for Iran's leadership? So... The Iranian president is like a prime minister in an absolute monarchy. So as such, he does not have that much power. But uh, the president is in charge of carrying out certain laws. He has some sway with uh, some parts of the government. He can somehow affect the lawmakers in relationship with the parliament. And also he either can be totally 100% uh, in the service of the Supreme Leader of Iran, who has absolute authority, or he can somehow advise the Supreme Leader to do certain things. Raisi was 100% at the service of the Iranian Supreme Leader, but in the past three years when he was president, he proved to be very inefficient, inept, uh, as a manager, and also he was horrible as a public speaker. So I would say that uh, there is a sigh of relief maybe in certain quarters in Iran because they have gotten rid of a very bad president. And whoever comes to, uh, who comes uh, becomes a president in Iran might be, most probably be a better manager and a better public speaker than Raisi, because that's not a very difficult thing to do. OK, so from, from, from what you said, it sounds like not much will change with his death. Iran, of course, involved in Iraq, Lebanon, Yemen, and, of course, uh, backing Hamas in Gaza. So that, all of that doesn't change, we presume. Regardless of who is the president, it is the supreme leader 
who assigns the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister of Interior, head of the Revolutionary Guard, and many other officials in, in Iran. So uh, the death of the president is not going to change the Iranian domestic policy or foreign policy. In certain cases, the president is more combative, like we saw with Mahmoud Ahmadinejad in 2005, who denied the Holocaust without anyone ordering him to do that. Or we saw Hassan Rouhani in 2013, who was a more pragmatic, more conciliatory person in terms of his relationship, uh, relationship with the world. But the Revolutionary Guards and the Supreme Leader, or actually the other way around, the Supreme Leader and the Revolutionary Guards are in charge of Iran's domestic policy, foreign policy, and also the military. And, and on domestic policy, I, I understand you yourself have, have suffered uh, 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 as a result of uh, Iranian domestic uh, policy. That also, we presume, does not change. It's not going to change that much. But as I mentioned, the president can advise the supreme leader into taking certain policies. Sometimes the president is successful, sometimes the president is not. But also we have to understand that the supreme leader of Iran is 85 years old and he's more interested in his legacy, which he sees the survival of the Islamic Republic, than his his legitimacy, which would be serving the people of Iran. So the next president will have that in mind and will be trying to count out to the supreme leader as much as possible and be totally at the service of the supreme leader. Otherwise, there would be a very confrontational period between mm. the supreme leader and the people around him, as well as the Revolutionary Guard and the president and the cabinet. Thanks for walking us through that. Mazia Bahari from uh, IranWire.com.